Hi all. In this video, we are going to discuss about new features and enhancements in Securite Endpoint Security 7.6 release. In this release, we have enhanced the data backup feature. We know that data backup feature is very important in cases of ransomware infection. If ransomware infection is there in one system, we can make use of the files in the backup to restore that into its original state. So now we are offering you the customized backup so that administrator can specify additional file types along with file size to make that critical uh, data backup in encrypted format. The benefit is that we can support up to 976 GB of single file size in this. We can add up any type of file extensions into this. By default, the backup will be residing in the drive with more free space. In this release, we can change that path into any other location. So the user can set new backup location, even that can be the network path by entering the username and the password of that, we can test it and save that setting. If the user uh, does, doesn't require to uh, add any file in uh, backup, then they can directly exclude that file from the setting of this data backup. This is one very important change we have done in Endpoint Security 7.6. Let's move to next change. This is about multiple domain name and IP supported with firewall. We know that firewalls are very important setting of endpoint security. In firewall, we need to create multiple rules and that rules may have IP addresses or domain names specified. Here in our firewall, we can set up multiple domain names and IP addresses in uh, firewall exceptions. So a maximum of 25 domain names or IP addresses can be added in single exception and maximum 255 exceptions can be added including existing exceptions in a single policy. So that is really going to help the customers and domain names or IP addresses can be imported from uh, any .txt files. So if you wish to use this, we can move to a respective policy. There we can go to the firewall setting and we can add a new rule where we can see the change that we added with respect domain name. So remote domain names can be added so that instead of IP addresses, the domain names can be directly set as remote locations in the firewall room. Let's move to the third change that we have done in endpoint uh, security 7.6. That is regarding improved patch management. We know that Patch management is one of the very important facility that uh, Securite provides to its users. In Securite patch management, now a facility is introduced to search and select all patches at once for specific system, so that no need to apply it uh, again and again, one by one. Instead, complete a selection can be done together and we can apply that to the respective uh, system. That is the benefit of it. Then master server auto logging information is added. So if you follow master slave architecture in your organization, any master admin logins to the secondary server via auto login, then the master admin activity log will be generated in secondary event logs so that we can identify who changed that particular setting. If it is changed by master admin, along with that message, there will be admin underscore master provided. So that is a good change that we can see in the event logs. We also introduced Linux AVGUI in 64-bit operating system. So if you want to access that on terminal, just run QH scan UI. It will be launching the GUI scanner, which will be offering you the basic features like scanner, schedule scan, scan options, reports, update, and about us. Let's move to next change. We have Updating on server and client. Earlier, we just displayed only the uh, virus database date. Now we are displaying virus database date along with the time. So it is applicable for Windows, Mac, and Linux platform. So we can easily identify when was the last update taken by that particular client. 
So that is the benefit of this change. We have also done small changes in scan setting. This time we have added a provision to exclude MD5 checksum from scan policy. Uh, to do that, just need to go to the scan uh, and uh, exclude files and folders. There we can see the exclude MD5 checksum value. Just put the value over here and just click on OK. The next change again regarding scan is that in the scan setting, RKU scan level, now we can support up to 16 levels so that that much deeper scanning is provided for archiving files. Then regarding DLP in endpoint security, we are coming up with a lot of good changes. One change is regarding optical character recognition. So the confidential or user-defined data from image formats, including JPG, PNG, TIFF, BMP, uh, uh, this uh, type of files can be uh, scanned uh, and we can ensure that no data leak is taking place in the organization for such type of file if they contain any sensitive data. Just uh, it is a part of uh, confidential data section only. When there is an attempt to transfer the data through such kind of file formats, they will be denying the uh, file transfer. In DLP, we have one more attractive change that is manual file fingerprinting. A user can classify any file as confidential or non-confidential. If they classify as uh, confidential, it will be treated as very sensitive file so that the operation uh, to leak the data would not be taking place there regardless of the content of the file. So whenever the user creates a file, he can set it as confidential so that no one can transfer such files from the system. Once it is confidential, we can see one kind of um, a green mark uh, above the uh, file icon. When it is public, it will be displaying one kind of uh, a blue tick mark uh, on top of the uh, file. So this is what, when they attempted to uh, transfer it, it will be uh, denying the file transfer. This is what the feature called as manual file fingerprinting. Then in DLP, now we have custom application monitoring. So any user can add any custom application into DLP application list and they can monitor the data transfer across such application. In order to do that, you just need to go to admin setting, DLP applications and add the application required there. So those applications will fall into the custom application category in the policy section and there you can enable the monitoring and apply the policy. So this is for custom application monitoring. Now again for DLP, we have added some country specific detection uh, like uh, drug enforcement agency number for United States, for Australia, we have added tax file number, business number, medical account number, etc. in the confidential data. So by default, the similar data patterns will be monitored automatically by our DLP. Now in DLP, uh, let's move to the next change we have here. That is uh, the enhancement we have done in printer activity report. In printer activity report, when you enable the print, uh, uh, printer activity monitoring here, uh, it will be uh, uh, giving you the reports to show the number of copies and number of pages. So that will really help us uh, to uh, check the policies in granular level and we can analyze the same. So these are the changes we have brought into our endpoint security 7.6. Thanks for watching. This